Thank you for coming out. You two are here to watch the show. Thank you for coming. More people will join you. It's the curse of being the host of one of these things. It's always my job to start by trying new material and having nobody here to see it. So uh, if you guys could be extra vociferous, even if you don't like it, just make some noise, like laugh really hard or, or boo. Honestly, if you want to boo, I mean, feedback's important. Um, this is Comedy from Home Sweet Home. Uh, as always, there's some rain. Basically, if there's rain within the past four days, people uh, stay home. Uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but that is one of the drawbacks of doing something at 9 p.m. on a Tuesday night. Um, that's always a bad time to plan stuff. All right, that's enough stalling. Uh, I'll get right to the point, everybody. Uh, somehow my two-year-old son tricked me into sitting on the couch with him today and watching The Lion King. That really fucked me up. As soon as Mufasa dies, I'm holding my boy, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? I'm like, I gotta go out and try and make people laugh. It's fucked up. I was leaving today, and my wife is like, yeah, go. Go on out, man. Have a good time. Make everyone laugh. And I was like, make everyone laugh? Fuck you. Don't worry about what I'm doing. Why don't you stop my boy from running away from home, becoming a vegetarian, becoming a stoner layabout, and then having to murder my brother to save you from a den of despair? You bitch. I always add, you bitch, at the end. It's uh, sort of like my catchphrase. Knock, knock. Who's there? You bitch. People love it. Anyways, buy your you bitch merch downstairs. Uh... Watching cartoons with my kids is kind of fucked up because he doesn't watch the cartoons right. Like, we started watching Rescue Rangers the other day, and my boy's all about, like, Chip and Dale and their nonsense. Fuck that. He should be about Monterey Jack. That dude's the man. Monterey Jack is the fat rat that likes cheese. He goes, ch ch ch, -ch cheese and floats on the smell of cheese. And he's always trying to scope out Gidget. That's who my boy should be emulating. Gidget bothers the shit out of me. Because Gidget is like the engineer. I married an actual PhD engineer. She has never once made a Zeppelin out of a sardine can for me. She doesn't fix shit. She doesn't have a wrench in her overalls. It's bullshit. She doesn't even like flies. All right, that's brand new. That needs a lot of work, guys. Uh, honestly, I'm not even sure Gidget is the name of that character, to be totally honest. All right, uh, the Olympics are happening. You guys excited for the Olympics? Yeah. No, you're not. You're all fucking liars. I appreciate you trying to go at the premise, but you're not, you're not excited for the Olympics. I hate the Olympics. The Olympics drive me nuts because every four years, it's people just bandwagoning on sports no one gives a fuck about. But, you know, I feel like this year I'm not as offended because the culture war for the past three years has been just going on and on about sports no one gives a fuck about. Like, we've been arguing since 2021 about trans athletes on the junior varsity women's curling teams. And I'm sort of done, I don't care anymore. I'm like, cool, you guys are really into uh, women's water polo. Yeah, you followed it all year wrong. You know, uh, Samantha Shimonis, she has three high school records. You're right, this is a big opportunity for America. I don't know. I, I fucking hate the Olympics. I, I will give it to this though, the people who have been arguing about the trans athletes especially when it comes to curling. Is there anyone with more of an advantage in athletes than a trans athlete in women's curling? They have so much experience throwing their stones away. Yeah, thank you. I bumbled that at the end. It could have been better. Uh, are you guys excited that Kamala Harris is running? This is what happens in Kamala Harris's America, guys. People spill beer on the table and they just use their hand to wipe it onto the floor. Don't worry. The, the arc of justice is long. The table is not balanced, and it did lean forward and spill into his own lap. So everyone got some. Uh, I'm ex I wasn't that excited when Kamala Harris was announced she was running until I saw yesterday that uh, she was putting together uh, white male affinity groups just for, you know, us white dudes to get together. Like, I always love hanging out with just, like, my white dudes, you know? To vote for Kamala Harris, I mean. Like, I just, I always have fun when me and all my white male friends can get together and talk about what the future should be and vote for Kamala Harris. Uh, we had a, I had a black friend who was like, hey, what are you doing tonight? I was like, nothing you could come to, buddy. All right, brother, stay home. We're voting for Kamala Harris. Uh, 
What else did I write down? <laughs> no, but it's it's cool. We're getting hats and little member jackets made up for our white affinity group, but uh, it's for Kamala Harris, so it's cool. Mark Ruffalo is on the white affinity group call. So that's where politics are in 2024. Both sides have a Hulk. One side has a Hulk that rips off a tuxedo t-shirt. And the other one is trying to get me to join a white affinity group. And it's not the one we have on tape saying the N-word. Surprise, surprise. That one's actually good. I don't know why no one gave me anything for that. This is going to be a good night, guys. I can feel it. That is my time, everybody. Uh, I'm sure I'll listen back to this recording and, and find out the only part of it that was work was when I called my wife a bitch. So uh, I'll do more of that. Anyways, let's start moving through the show so I can go home to my bitch wife. <laughs> there we silver delete all that. Uh, all right, everybody. Your very first comic coming to the stage is not here, I don't think. Actually, wait. Yeah, it is. Hey, you, you ready? Oh, yeah. All right, your very first comic asked to go early and then showed up after we started, but that's all right, because this man is always ready. Put your hands together for Ayush. Yeah. I was here. Monty just caught me up, guys. I was talking to Monty. He said that I have fire fits and I'm sexy and that I think he wants to have gay sex with me. So, you know, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. I've been ready for him. Uh... Now, speaking of the Olympics, I think we need to give uh, Asians more respect. They are hella athletic. I don't know if you guys have seen this. They're everywhere in the Olympics. They're in the gymnastics. They're in the, they're in the table tennis. They're in the fucking gun Olympics. Apparently, they have that. They have shooting Olympics for pistol, pistols and rifles. Did you guys know that? Yeah, and America loses. How, how are we the country with the most guns and we're the worst at using them? What? We're losing to the Asians. We got semi-automatic Asians. We got shooters in Shibuya beating our ass. It's crazy. It's crazy. I, uh, I'm going to talk about my grandma real quick. My grandmother, she grew up really, uh, she grew up poor in rural India. And she grew up working on a farm. She would take care of the ox and the cows, and she would harvest the plants. But her main job at the farm was to pick the cotton. And for her whole days of work, she would get one one hundredth of a rupee, which is equivalent to like a hundredth of a penny, right? Like a what? Paisa. 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 Paisa just means money, but yeah, 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 paisa. She would get paisa. Um, and my dad told me all of this, that she would pick cotton for basically nothing, and she would get punished if she did it wrong, and that she would sing while she did it. And my first thought was, no way my dad is telling me my grandma was hitting the fucking bed in the water back when she was growing up. All right, thank you, Patrick. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Patrick. <laughs> uh, I uh, I grew up uh, Indian, so that means I only had a, a few job choices I can follow, truly. I could either become a doctor, or an engineer, or a lawyer. I, I was in high school theater at the time. I said, Dad, I want to be an actor. He said, no, beta, it's pronounced doctor. I said, Dad, I want to... I want to try comedy. He was like, you're already a professional dumbass. Don't do it in front of other people. I, I felt disrespected and I was like, Dad, you're not really listening to me. So I threw him a curveball. I said, Dad, I want to be a male stripper. And he said, Beta, you don't have the body for that. <laughs> Nobody wants to see Magic Mukesh. They want to see Magic Mike. <laughs> I was like, shit, Magic Mukesh, he got me, bruh. Magic Mukesh, and then I was like, Magic Mukesh. Yeah, as, as soon as I learn how to throw ass, that joke becomes a reality. Um, so that's where we're at in my life. I, uh, I, enjoy, I enjoy having Indian parents. My, my parents and I, a big thing between us is that, you know, they grew up very different to how I grew up. They grew up poor in India, and I grew up kind of poor in America. And 
like our our lives are just very different, right? So like my my parents, my dad when he grew up, he had to scoop cow poop with his hands so that they could feed the fire so that they could eat to live, right? And I grew up complaining about Spotify Premium, right? So like very different lives, just not it doesn't really equate. So we have a a struggle sometimes where like the communication doesn't really work out. Um, but as the son of immigrants, it, I feel, uh, I, this is common amongst children of immigrants, where you feel this guilt for having a life that your parents never had. And so a lot of times immigrant children will take it upon themselves to be financially responsible for their parents, right? When they grow old and they can't take care of themselves. So I don't want you guys to worry. I have a plan. I'm gonna become a male stripper. My name is gonna be Magic Mukesh. I'm gonna rock the fucking stage, baby. All right, that's my name. My name is Ayush Patodi. That was my time. Give it up for Jacob, everyone. Ayush, everybody, give it up for Ayush. With the unique immigrant experience of taking care of your old parents, something us native-born people never have to do is take care of old and firm people who gave birth to us. All right, I can realize how saying native born made it sound racist, and I take it all back. Uh, all right, guys, we are really going to loosen it up a little, okay? Uh, your next comic, this guy is new. He just started doing comedy, everybody, so make sure you make some noise for him. Be supportive. Give the man some love, everybody. Put your hands together for Chuck Nephew. Think I got it. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Y'all make some noise for y'all self. I, 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 I guess we're gonna love ourselves, huh? It's all right. Uh, I did another comedy show about a couple hours ago. They asked me I should come over here to the home sweet home, so I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I came in here, I'm like, dang, it look like a dungeon hall in here. It's so small. Then I'm like, oh man, I done set myself up for failure. But let's see what I can talk about. These kids these days crazy, man. They crazy these days. I know y'all heard on the news, kids bringing guns to class and stuff like that. It's crazy. They telling the parents to lock up the guns which I understand, but I do blame the parents. I blame them. Not just for not locking up the guns, I blame them because ain't no more porno DVDs no more. They ain't got enough porno DVDs on the dresser. What happened to porn, man? Right? Kids ain't watching porn these days. I, I remember I used to go in my dad's room and try to steal all the porn like, make sure, uh, you, come on now, you, you remember that blank disc, the white disc? At first I thought it was how I had. I thought it was the movie how I had. I popped that joint in, I see nothing but cooch. I'm like, ooh. I'm talking about I was only eight years old. I, I didn't know, I didn't know what was going on. But I was so interested like, oh man. Nothing's wrong with watching porn. I still watch porn to this day and I'm married. I still watch porn. Because porn give you a lot of a lot of tips. See, with me growing up, it showed me how to really fuck a girl. To be honest, like it showed me how to eat her out. You know, showed me what she might like, what she might not like. It's crazy, man. But kids ain't got no porno in their reach these days, man. It's crazy. But man, I'm getting old. I'm getting old. I sat on a brick wall a couple days ago. Maybe 10, 15 minutes. Waiting on my food. I got up. I'm talking about my ass and my dick was numb. I'm talking about all this. I was like, God damn. I ran to my wife like, boom, boom, shake it. Make sure it's there. Make sure it's there. I'm sorry, man. I can't live without my dick. I'm sorry. <laughs> but fellas, stop fucking in the mirror. Stop it. 
You look stupid. Stop it. I, I, I fucked my wife in the mirror. I swear to God. I looked up for the first time, and this one I'm ready to come. I look up, I'm like, ah, I look like I was venom in that business. Like, I was trembling, I said, I would never look in the mirror again. Hell no. Fellas, I don't care how tough you are, how big you are, it don't matter. All men that ate ass, all men that ate pussy with their ass up in the air. All men. Your ass in the air? Ass? Come on. Hey, if you caught yourself looking in the mirror with your ass up in there, you wouldn't do it again. That's not even the worst part, though. The worst part is when the wind hits your ass. Now you got a fart like, you know what I mean? true story. <laughs> True story. <sighs> I came up here. At first, I didn't see no females. None at all. But I see. Yeah, I hear them. I see some now, though. So, just one question, ladies. It's another lady back there. Yeah, <laughs> ladies. Um. Is having a blow up doll cheating? Is it cheating? It's practice. It's practice, right? Because you know how y'all ladies is. If a man just look at a girl, oh, you cheating, what you doing? Like, come on now. But I say that to say, okay, I will submit my order for my blow up doll. <laughs> That's my time, fellas, ladies. Chuck Nathan. Give it up, everybody, for Chuck Nephew. Come on, just start now. Give him a big round of applause. And the question really is, by the way, Chuck, it's not, uh, you know, is having a blow-up doll cheating? It depends on what you do with the blow-up doll. If you fuck it, no. If you get in an HOV lane, yes. That's absolutely cheating. <laughs> Some of us got married and had kids to get in that fucking lane, so. All right. By the way, I will, I will defend fucking in the mirror just real quick. Uh, I love fucking in the mirror, but not, I don't like to look at myself, but every now and then I see my wife look at herself and the shame on her face, and that's what gets me off. All right, we're going to keep this thing moving, everybody. Your next comic coming to the stage is the Hope of Hopewell. He's the St. Peter of Petersburg. He's um, a tattooed white guy who looks slightly Arab. It's Patrick Logan. My man Chuck said he uh, he said when he have his ass up in the air while he eating pussy and the wind hit it. <laughs> I would not take you for a camper. Uh, let me take you for a camper. Uh, it is true. I wouldn't take you for having the fan on either, because he's black. All right, we all know their houses are hot. All right. Uh, uh, I was gonna. Well, Kay, Kay's here. Kay's here. Was uh, Kay's here to watch? Thank you for coming, Kay. Her friend uh, is C. C went to go get something, and then we got my man BC Powder over here, and then we got uh, LGBTQ right here. Hey, oh, that was that would have hit harder if C was here. Um, C wasn't here. All right. Uh, my name's Patrick, guys. I was born December twenty fourth, nineteen eighty nine. Yeah, 1989. And uh, my friend told me, he was like, dude, you lived in the 80s. What was it like in the 80s? I was like, I don't know. I don't remember. But it had to be great. I spent a whole week in the 80s sucking a tit. Uh, and 10 years in the 90s. Uh, I've got mommy issues. Uh, I never knew what my ethnicity was growing up. Uh, Jacob mentioned that I looked like I was Arab, like I'm Arab. Uh, I never knew what my ethnicity was. I didn't know my dad. And I look like DJ Khaled, and my mom looks like Paula Dean. Uh, especially when she says the N word. Um, I'm just kidding, guys. My mom does not look like Paula Dean. Uh, I used to tell people that I was Puerto Rican. 
until I got beat up by a Puerto Rican for saying that I was Puerto Rican without being Puerto Rican. Um, I wanted to know what I was, so I looked up my DNA ancestry and I was very happy when I saw 35% Portuguese. I was like, hell yeah, Spanish. Then I looked up where Portugal is, fuck, still white. Um, and then after I thought about it, I was like, man, I'm like, man, I'm 100% I'm white. And then after like thinking about it, I was like, fuck yeah, dude, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not that bad, could be worse, uh, could be worse. We're all, we're living in crazy times, guys. Um, we're living in crazy times, assassination attempts, Microsoft crashing, like we don't know what will happen next. We gotta love each other, we gotta be nice, and we gotta go for what we want in life. I'm gonna do anal. I'm gonna. I hope it doesn't hurt. Uh, I hope it doesn't hurt. I was watching a UFC fight recently, and I, I learned that I don't I don't know that many flags. I don't know history or geography. I was watching a UFC fight, and I saw a green flag, and I'm like, where is that? Where is that? I don't know where that's from. And I realized the only flags I know are the American flag, the Confederate flag, the ISIS flag, and the gay pride flag. And those are my favorite in that order. Um, <laughs> I got tested for STDs recently. Everybody should get tested for STDs unless you already know you've got AIDS. So you should get tested for STDs. I got tested for STDs at a local Kroger uh, in Chesterfield. There's a Kroger with a uh, little doctor right by the produce section. Um, this is a true story. I actually went into a Kroger and pulled my pants down legally this time. Uh, now this is a true story. I went to the back and pulled my pants down and the girl looks down and says, Sir, I hate to tell you this, but this is the deli. Um, I don't know if that's disease, but it is not premium beef. Um, I went to pick up my results with a gallon of milk and a loaf of bread. Turns out I've only got one herpes. That's a win. Um, I like shy girls. Any shy girls in here? Make some noise. Shy girls? That was a trick question. Uh, I like the thing about shy girls when you're going to hook up with them. Uh, when you go to the bedroom, they'll say, turn the lights off. And I'll be like, why? You're beautiful. I want to look at you. And they're like, turn the lights off. And I'm like, I want to see you. You have nothing to be ashamed of. And after all this time, I finally realized that they want to turn the lights off so they don't have to see me. Um, I don't look this good naked. Um, I wear a shirt in the swimming pool. I wear a strap on in bed. Um, but when the lights are off, I'm Jason Momoa. Uh, mine, maybe that's why she calls me Jason. Uh, all right, guys, I've been uh, Jacob McFadden. Guys, give it up for your host, Jason Momoa, everybody. Pat Logan, everybody, exposed himself at a Kroger deli. You could tell he wasn't there for herpes. She didn't ask if it was pimento loaf. Come on, that's a joke for old Jewish people that like the deli. Uh, hey, Pat, are those new tattoos or did your niece take you to a henna festival? I'm talking about the terrible things on your elbows. Uh, see, even you're embarrassed. You picked the wrong elbow. All right, we'll move it along. Uh, your next comic, everybody. This guy is amazing. In fact, uh, you might recognize him. Four years ago, he took home the silver in, uh, in the track and field events at the Olympics, everybody. Put your hands together for Larry Voles. Yeah, okay, well, uh, then I'll start with saying, you know, it's obvious I, I have a disability, you know, and I like to acknowledge it up front. 
I have what's known as horizontal ass crack syndrome. <laughs> yeah, it's what it sounds like. Yeah, most people are like this. I'm like that, you know. And it's more of a hassle than you'd expect. I mean, pants never fit right, you know. If I have a drawstring waistband, it gives me a hell of a wedgie. And when I get on a playground slide, it sounds like this. And I was I want you to be able to hear me because Okay. Uh, every every bout Everybody, when he walks out, applaud hoot now. just fell apart on me is actually what I'm here to show you. I'm not doing comedy today. I'm going to share with you an amazing invention. This is the Invisonator. It can turn anything, well, within this size, completely invisible. Go Take my word for it. So I'm going to slowly extract a deck of cards from my pocket. This may look obscenely slow, but it's actually the first time I've reached into my right pocket with my right hand to get a deck of cards out. And I could not have imagined pulling that off a month ago. Thank you. All right. In this drawer, I can fit exactly this. this deck. Don't, no, don't get up. <laughs> I can. I can fit this deck of cards into this drawer. Using my right hand in a way that I feel good about, but is boring for you, sorry. There you go, is in the box. And simply by flicking the switch, There's nobody in here that is pregnant or planning to be, is there? Okay. I turn it on, and you can see the Inviso rays at work. Ooh. And just like that, the cards have become. Invisible, Ooh, but wait, don't look yet. I'm going to prove to you they actually have turned invisible. I'm going to remove them from the box. You will know the box for you. Don't drop it, it's worse than trying to find a contact. Right. 
current shit invisible, you know? If you want to invest, now is the good time. Cheers, y'all. Give it up for Larry Voles. Now some people might say that seemed longer than five minutes. But after the man took a bullet at a Trump rally, I'm gonna let him go as long as he wants. God bless that patriot. All right, your next comedian. Your next comedian knows shit about magic, okay? He knows shit about a lot of things. This boy is dumb. He comes from Montana. All he knows is horse shit and cow pies. Everybody, put your hands together for the simple redneck, Kale Moore. Yeah. Make him laugh, you big dumb fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Okie dokie. Will do. I knew Trump had a magician on staff. That's how he made all those fucking files disappear. As well as some children, I'm sure. <laughs> all right. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I just actually went to D.C. yesterday and hit some open mics there, and I learned one big thing is that people in D.C. do not like political jokes, which I guess kind of makes sense because politics is like their whole fucking lives up there. It's like going to Baltimore and talking about eating crab. It's like going to Richmond and joking about getting crabs. It's like going to West Virginia and joking about trading sexual favors for Oxycontin. Patrick was just nodding sagely like he knows from experience. Uh, no, I, West Virginia actually kind of makes me sad. <laughs> I should probably stop telling jokes about it because I, it does hit me personally because I work in the mining industry and West Virginia mining is like their whole thing. And it's sad because back in the day, mining people used to be straight up socialists. They fought the fucking government for their rights. They were the kind of people who were like, we're going to work 40 hours a week, we're going to get overtime pay, or we're going to fucking murder you. And now they're all Trump voters. I feel like part of it has to do with, uh, with Trump's big I Love Miners campaign a few years ago. Like, I love miners, can't get enough of them, okay? Miners are great. The other day, my buddy Jeff, he told me, we got some miners we want you to meet. So I hopped on a plane. <laughs> love miners, they're great. Um, yeah, speaking of, of politics, it feels like we're in a political crisis every single fucking day now. Uh, but I, uh, I went to Philly recently, I learned a lot about American history and I figured out the very first political crisis after the nation was founded. It was an immigration crisis. In the 1790s, they were arguing whether or not to let French people into the country. <laughs> and I know what my answer would be. Yeah, it's, I guess I'm just happy that, uh, you know, we could have had more French people than we do. Can you imagine if every single city in the country had like a little France in it? Everyone's wearing striped shirts. There's a column of smoke for miles around from all the shitty cigarettes. And every time you come up to a red light, a mime tries to pretend to wash your windows. <laughs> That's my mime impression. I'll work on it. Uh, I realized uh, recently that my brother has a weird fetish. He, uh, he loves roller coasters way too much. I went to Hershey Park and he was like, how's the Wildcats Revenge? And I'm like, what the fuck is that? It's like their new roller coaster. I was like, how the fuck do you know that? He said, well, I, I like to check the, you know, the list of all the top roller coasters in the nation every now and then. I'm like, God damn, you need to get a girlfriend. Uh, but yeah, he, uh, he was telling me about some roller coasters at Six Flags in New Jersey, which I didn't know there was a, a Six Flags in New Jersey. My first thought was, how the fuck did they fit it in there? 
I was just imagining a Guido walking down the street eating a hoagie and all of a sudden a roller coaster goes over his head. And he's like, oh! Yeah, I'm not sparing anybody tonight. You're all on my list. France, New Jersey, Trump. I'm a madman. Uh, thank God. Thank you, Jacob. Uh, I recently decided to start a synchronicity diary. Anybody know what that is? Yeah, so a synchronicity diary is a journal you keep of every time there's a really weird occurrence uh, in your life, like whenever you uh, you see the same car twice or something like that, you write it down, and it's supposed to help you with your you know, perception of reality. And I feel like it's going to end one of two ways: either I'm going to escape the matrix, or I'm going to give myself paranoid schizophrenia. I might become one of those van block letter guys who writes like prayers on the side of their shit and parks in the Walmart parking lot. You ever wonder why there's so many of those? I bet the first guy who came up with it, he drove past the second one and he was like, fuck! He goes out the next day and he puts a little copyright sticker in the corner of his van. All right, well, this has been electric. Right now, I'm going to go write in my synchronicity diary how there's two guys that look exactly like me sitting right there. Uh, my name's been Kale Moore. Have a good night. <laughs>
You wake up one morning and she just scrolling, you see a big ass black dick, just know it was his. Somebody close, bro. <laughs> no, but seriously. Dudes are tough as hell until it's time to read out loud. If I was a woman, if I were you, my first date with him would have been to the library. I would have took him in the kitty room, made him read to the children. If he messed up any words, I would get the hell out of there. So he'd be a savage. He wouldn't do nothing, but... Okay, he's not enjoying this right now. I don't want to stop. He's a cool guy. I just, I just came up here and was like practicing crowd work, and it was like, you're the only couple, and you're like an easy target, so... I feel like an asshole right now. Let me go back to my original jokes. Um, I spent a lot of money on weed and not enough on brake pads. I pulled up here tonight, my car was sounding like the Andre 3000 flute album. The first time my daughter heard the orchestra, she said, Ooh, daddy, that sounds like our car. <laughs> and if you ask God for something, he'll give it to you, won't he? I always pray that my son will be better than me. Then I found out I had the second biggest dick in the house. Third, if you include the dog. Now don't get me wrong, I wasn't on no weird shit. I ran into his meat by accident. When he's 14, he's playing football. He was in the bathroom taking an ice bath, and I didn't know he was in there. Y'all, I was so shocked when I opened that door, I spoke my mind out loud. I said, damn! It's been that long since I seen your dick! The whole time I was thinking to myself, I thought ice baths were supposed to reduce inflammation. <laughs> I was proud at first, but then I got a little jealous. I just couldn't wrap my mind around how his dick was in below freezing temperatures. And it was still bigger than my own temperature did. His dick looked like it didn't even belong to him. It looked like we switched dicks. Walking out of that bathroom, all I could think was, I don't know where he get that from. He must get that from his mama's side. Yeah, but, um, been married 13 years. Can I get a little love for that? Clap, clap, clap. I knew she was the one when she had that bag of croutons like some Cheeto puffs. <laughs> I said, those some strong jaws. I'm gonna marry your ass. <laughs> yeah, but you gotta know your lady's love language. My lady's love language is food. Every time I eat turkey necks, she'd be like, ooh, ooh, come upstairs. Do me just like you just did those turkey necks. <laughs> but it's never a fair fight. She can go all night, but as soon as my turn, Three minutes in, I'm already hollering. Sound like I'm falling out of a tree. Ah! And the other day, my daughter heard me because she came knocking on the door all frantic. <laughs> Y'all heard it there? It sounded like daddy had jumped out the window. And my wife, an asshole, she said, what it sound like, baby? She said, ah! All right, that's my time, y'all. Thank you. everybody uh, my wife that bitch hey she told me her love language is uh, acts of service and getting gifts it's very convenient for my wife isn't it yeah that's what she said too I will oh, now I know where his disposal income is coming from my tax dollars. Uh, he's enlisted. Um, she's a base wife. Uh, just kidding. He won't propose to her. Uh, he's a coward. Um, uh, doesn't serve a distinction. Uh, no bronze star. Uh, your next comic uh, has never served in the military, but he's braver than all of the enlisted men in this bar right now. Um, your next comic was born with an abnormally small head, but he's overcome it with an abnormally large intellect. Everybody, put your hands together for the Thinking Man's comic. Big Chuck! Buckle up! The not the of the old man, everybody! Yeah, home sweet home. How are we doing? All right. It's a fun crowd. Yeah, Jacob always says I have a small head. I think it's just like compared to him, everyone has a small head. He's... <laughs> 
Got a big one, I don't know. I, uh, yeah, is anyone here autistic? No, kind of, okay. I don't know, a lot, I, I feel like I keep meeting people who say that they're autistic, right? And then I'll be like, oh, that's interesting, like when did you find out? Like, I don't know, I feel like there's a lot of people who say they're autistic, but they're kind of like self-diagnosed. Like I keep meeting people who say they're autistic, and I'm like, oh really, like when did you find that out? Like how'd you find out? They're like, oh yeah, I took a test. It was online. I can name every monster that fights Godzilla. It's like, okay, I don't know, maybe that's, I, I don't know, I'm not an expert. That could be uh, what makes you autistic. I don't know, I'm just saying that because uh, I've self-diagnosed myself with OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. Uh, I think I have that. Mainly, I, I think I have that because I think I like, uh, when people, like when my friends ask me for advice, I only give advice that's like good, helpful for me, right? Like my buddy was like, uh, oh man, I've been having a rough week, like my girlfriend broke up with me, my mom has breast cancer, like I'm feeling awful, like I just, I feel so bad, I don't know what to do to feel better. And I was like, oh, did you try uh, touching every corner of your door frame? <laughs> um, that makes me feel better. Now, this, I really knew that I had OCD because uh, I was taking one of those online tests and it was like one of the symptoms of having OCD is like uh, being like a clean freak, right? And I realized I was a clean freak because it's like, I hate being covered in shit. Uh, <laughs> like if I'm covered in shit, I have an obsession with getting it off. Um, when I'm caked in someone else's diarrhea, I have like a compulsion to wash it off. It's all right. Uh, <laughs> that's fine. Uh, yeah, you don't. I always feel when the camera's recording me. I'm always like, I wish I knew how good I would do before I got up. I don't know. Because uh, I'm like, right now, I wish I wasn't being recorded. But <laughs> so there's a chance I was going to do super well. But that's past. Uh, that's past. Uh, I, uh, I, I, we, we, nowadays, everything's so politically divisive recently, right? I was just thinking about this, like, in retrospective, like, uh, you know, a few years ago, just like 10 years ago, like, or I guess it's longer than that, but back in, like, 2012, I used to work at a summer camp, and one time there was these two kids at the summer camp, and one of them was like, uh, Obama is ruining our country, and then this other kid went, you hate Obama? My family loves Obama. At least tell me you like Michael Jackson. And then they hugged, they became friends, and played together the whole week. But I was like, yeah, things are so different now. It's like, that couldn't happen now. Like, people couldn't mend political differences over a love of uh, a sexual predator like they used to. Um, like, I don't think there's any kids, there's no kids, you know, at the camp right now where one of them's like, uh, Trump is ruining our country. And then another kid's like, my family loves Trump. At least tell me you like P. Diddy. Uh, he's, just, I don't, <laughs> he's a sex freak. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, uh, I was watching that movie, you know, that movie Silence of the Lambs recently. Yeah, it's, I'm not gonna lie, it's a little bit problematic. Uh, first of all, cannibalism. Uh, I don't know, I don't wanna sound like a liberal cuck, but uh, if you're killing someone just to eat them, you should be fired. Uh, that's what I think. Uh, but no, the most problematic part of that movie is like, the, the girl that Buffalo Bill like uh, kidnaps, they're all talking about her. Everyone refers to her, they're so cruel. They're just like, Jodie Foster's like looking for that woman and she keeps going all around West Virginia. It's like, have you seen this big fat pig of a woman? And they're like, oh yeah, I saw that fucking cow. Like they, they, this is in the movie, they say fucked up things. And you see the woman that was kidnapped? She's like a skinny woman with a round face. I'm like. This is what was fat in the 90s. I don't know. It was a, it was a different time. I was like, it offended me, kind of. I was like, this is fucked up, the way they're talking about women in this movie about uh, murder and uh, cannibalism. I should have put that at the end. That's okay, guys. But uh, let's bring giant head uh, Jacob McFadden back up here. Thank you very much. Charles Waring thinks he's making a joke. But 14 years ago, I got a motorcycle, and I had to get a custom motorcycle helmet made and approved by the DOT to be street legal. 
Making fun of disabilities is never okay. You fucking pig. You big fat person. All right. Your next comedian coming to the stage, uh, you'll recognize him. I called him out earlier. Uh, he's a fake member of the military. He's totally stolen valor. Uh, he's sort of a pussy with vanity muscles who wouldn't do anything if I walked over and slapped his girlfriend in the face right now because he's a straight A bitch. Uh, straight up pussy. Uh, never once been in a fight. Never could be in a fight. Anyways, all that said, uh, this piece of shit is here to make you guys laugh. Uh, everybody get ready for half of a man coming all the way up to the stage. It's Chris Sipple. Give it up for the guy that bets on only the Special Olympics. Woo! Those kids are so strong. <laughs> Your kids will be there soon. No. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if YouTube will flag this, just the comments. <laughs> Do they ever flag any of your videos? Okay. Uh, anyways, guys, uh, what's up? It's cool to perform in front of 50 people here. Don't look around, there's 50 people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, all right, a little bit about me. Uh, I'm an automotive YouTuber. If the audience doesn't know, that's not a comedian. Uh, I, built, I have a build series called How Do You Build a Car If You Never Had a Father. It's did really well. Um, the most watched video in that video series is uh, how to hold a flashlight if you never had a father. <laughs> but I know I'm, really, I'm doing some uh, good work out there because a lot of people relate to me. They, they'll comment and be like, I didn't know that. And then uh, they'll be like, this really helped me. And I'm like, yeah, I had to find out you know, personally what the difference is between uh, your father's flashlight and fleshlight. Anybody have uh, step parents here? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh, okay, one person. All right. Uh, yeah, so either it's it's crazy having step parents because you either want to fight them or fuck them. <laughs> they're either fucking your dad or they're beating your mom. And I'm just like, when is it my turn? <laughs> no. <laughs> I was raised by a single mother and a single grandmother. They did really, they did really well. I wor I learned a lot along the way. I, uh, I learned the difference when, uh, or I learned when a period ends and when menopause starts. All right, well, I guess nobody had a single mother or a single grandmother. I guess I'm the only one. Uh, I came out to my dad recently as a metrosexual, and my dad didn't know what that was, so he was like, what would Jesus say? And I said, well, Jesus might say that I, I dress nice, I uh, have a wicked bench press, but I probably spend a little too much on conditioner. Oh, a couple laughs, okay. Dude, you brought Wawa. Did you get that delivered or did you just bring that? Oh, I picked it up. Fuck yeah, dude. Are you more of a Wawa or a Sheets guy? Uh, you, you ever heard of the Wawa run? You never heard of the when people do Wawa runs? Like, oh, I'm going to go do a Wawa run? No. Uh, for the longest time, I used to do Wawa runs, and uh, everybody would get there faster than me because they were driving and I was actually running. That's a that's a good classic joke. Spe speaking of the Olympics, uh, DraftKings said uh, has it where you can actually bet on the Special Olympics now. Uh, Three-legged parlay. Uh, I just don't know how many handicaps I'm going to have in it. Um, let's see. As a child, I was a part of a cult. I'm the only surviving member of this cult. I made it to 18. It's the Make-A-Wish Foundation. All right, I guess I'm the only one that made that uh, joke up. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Break me a piece of that Kit Kat bar. Or break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. It's a good quote, not in today's economy. Yeah, that's a down economy joke. You guys ever say, uh, I'm going to take you to Pound Town? Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. My bedroom's right there. Pound Town is uh, in Wisconsin, so it's 15 hours away. We could just take 10 steps and watch a skateboard. Or we can just take a long trip and probably an argument's gonna happen and by the time we get there, I'm not gonna wanna do anything. That's a bitch shit. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Hmm. How much time do I have left? One minute, eight hours. Damn, so I need to write more jokes. I grew up on a farm, guys. I grew up on a farm when I uh, was a kid. It was Facebook farm. 
Things have changed now. Uh, it's full of Russian bots and uh, marketplace ads. It's a fun one for the boomers. Uh, let's see. I'll get out of here on this one. Um, got to see recently that uh, Trump was shot. Yeah. So they asked me, since I'm in the military, a fake member of the military, uh, they always uh, they always say, uh, who would you want your commander in chief to be? And I'm like, well, in the, in the fake military, we have a cutoff age. Leonardo DiCaprio has a cutoff age for his women. Uh, but we run that White House like Pete Diddy. Doesn't matter what age you are, you can get groomed. Uh, do I have any more time left, or is that it? No, I think i more time. All right. All right. Uh, New Orleans recently put out that uh, you got to have the Ten Commandments on the walls in the public school classrooms, and they act like that's going to stop the floods from coming. I agree with the audience. Thank you for your fake service. All right, everybody. Uh, we're getting ready. Your next comic is legitimately a force of nature. He runs the show. He's the only one, actually. He runs the entire show at Basic City. Uh, he's one of the top performers in the city. When Sandman Comedy Club was still a thing, they used him until they went out of business. But they were about to fire him, but they didn't because they went out of business first. Uh, but your next comedian is a real uh, a Richmond fixture, everybody. Put your hands together for the DUI comic, Monty Giles. Uh, I got, I got, I got fourth place in that comedy competition at Sandman, so this went back to me now. Hi, what's up, home sweet home? How are y'all doing? Uh, you two dudes right here, y'all having a good time? Hell yeah, y'all been here the whole time. Thank you for being here. I was gonna be mean to you, but then I was like, why? You know? I do like how you're wearing red and blue, though. That is like very. I feel like y'all have like a riddle to tell me. Like one of us lies, one of us tells the truth. I don't know. I, I like how dumb I am. I'm a very dumb person, but it's beautiful when you know that you're dumb. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't like guys. Like, are y'all smart guys? Is it just the glasses? Yeah, but it's cool, right? Because you're like, I don't need to know shit. Like science, who gives a fuck? Yeah, I can pay. I can use TurboTax to pay my taxes. You know what I'm saying? And it's like so. Like science is like magic to me. So like, I don't need to know how shit works. Like I don't need to know like anything about like magnets or motion sensors. I just need to know when I go to the CVS and I do this in front of the door, I feel cool as shit, you know what I'm saying? Have you ever done that? Like you're walking in and you're just like, oh yeah, and that shit just opens up and you're just like, I can do this. I do that for like 25 minutes. And I'm like, people walk in and I'm just like, Dun I, I got it. My mana is full. But yeah, I don't need to know like, I don't need to know about like water propulsion or hydroponics or anything like that. I just need to know that when I sit on my bidet, I come. You know, and that's magic. That's all. That's all I need. You know what I'm saying? Do you boys have a days? Don't be, don't be giggly. I know it's not, it's not that silly. It's just your butt. Uh, my ex added me on Instagram like the first, my first ever ex. Like we dated in seventh grade to like eleventh grade. Like first love, lost my virginity. They added me on Instagram, so I peeped on their Instagram. They are married to a lesbian, right? Who looks just like me? And I, I do not know how to deal with that because it's like in my head, I'm like, okay, so they thought I was perfect except for I didn't have a pussy. You know what I'm saying? Which I get, I guess. I'm not a wet person. Actually, I'm a wet person. I, you know what I was thinking about today? I wish I cried prettier. That's, that's a good quality to have that people don't talk about. You know what I'm saying? To weep. It's beautiful. I have this one friend who just, the most beautiful crier. Like, her eyes would well up perfectly. They look like two puddles during a sunrise. And there would just be one tear that would just fall down beautiful. It got so bad, I would try to make her cry on purpose. You know what I'm saying? I would, like, bring up trauma, she told me. I'd be like, oh, yeah, what was that about Uncle Harold in the closet? What was that you said you called him Uncle Hansy? And I'm like, yes, she's good, she's welling up. Me, I cry bad, I'm a bad cry. It's like you threw a stick of dynamite in a swimming pool, you know what I mean? It's just wet, just so much wet, just too much wet, you know what I'm saying? And I try to talk when I cry. I look, and I, I'm crying so I sound like a deaf guy giving directions, you know, ah, you know? Have you ever looked at the mirror when you cried? Don't do that. That is, I looked at myself in the mirror when I was crying and I said, holy shit. Because you have stupid cry thoughts in your head. 
I looked at myself in the mirror when I was crying, and I was like, this is what I look like. <laughs> Whenever I cry, I always say, oh my God. I say, oh my, why is this happening to me? <laughs> Every single time. It doesn't matter what. And then I'll do this thing to where like, I'll try to talk and then I'll lose my breath and then I'll like stall the last word. You know what I'm saying? I'll be like, I don't understand. It's terrible. I was vulnerable. <laughs> uh, do you think Adam was pissed when God took his rib to make Eve and then he found out he could now suck his own dick? You know, like a God just playing a little prank, like, and he's like, oh, like, now she's here yapping, and I can just do this myself. And then, you think about it, Adam got the worst cut of the Bible, dude. He didn't meet any cool animals or no shit. Like, he just got betrayed by his top bitch. That's wild. But, <laughs> like the original ho not faithful, that's wild. But no, like, if you think about it, he was the first man, and then the first woman. So at that point, you are now the hottest guy ever. You know what I'm saying? But then... A reckoning is coming because there's gonna be another guy who's hotter than you and he's your son and he has to fuck your wife so Adam was like the first coupled ever like ever he had to be like by design that's insane hail Satan uh, what else do I got? Uh, I don't, I, it's, ring fingers are weird to me. I don't understand. I hate when I'm wearing a ring on my ring finger, like my middle finger, and then people are like, oh, are you married? And it's like, that doesn't mean shit. Like, ring fingers don't mean, I will, this, it has no signal. I will cheat on anyone. I don't care. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a round of applause out of nowhere, and then you still clap along with it? Like, I don't know, I, I was walking down the street the other day and I heard clapping and, and like, before I could even recognize it, I was like, fuck yeah, dude. Like, I just, I have the fuck yeah, dude, in my brain. It's just like, I like pause, but it's gotten me in trouble. Cause when the, when the Trump boys came, they were around the corner and I was walking down the street and I heard clapping and I was like, oh, hell yeah. And then, yeah, they killed Heather Hyatt. So, uh, you have anything else? Oh, don't you think it's so funny that uh, for Veterans Day, they always celebrate with fireworks. Right? Yeah, it's like, oh, we're doing this for you. And they're just like, ah! That's very funny to me. Uh, my name is Monty Giles. Please give it up for your host, Jacob McDad, and everyone. Monty. Monty, where'd you go to college? VCU. You went to VCU, okay. Uh, so just for that last joke of yours where you were in Charlottesville for the Unite the Right rally and you didn't go to UVA, why were you there? Huh? Why were you just walking down the streets of Charlottesville when the Trump boys were around? I was undercover. Oh, okay. I was for Vice. Oh, okay, yeah. All right. That's, uh, that's not a terrible cover. That's actually, that's somewhat plausible. Uh, you know, the greatest thing about doing this is the comics are all uh, so, um, what do I want to say this? They're so naive. Uh, <laughs> Patrick Logan was just outside. He was saying goodbye to me. He's got to go. And a, a drug chick walks up and says, you're leaving? Can I get a ride? And he looks at me and goes, should I? <laughs> no. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> now, for 2012, yes. <laughs> but it's 2024, no. <laughs> All right. By the way. Pat Logan is somehow still downstairs talking to that girl, being like, uh, where are you going? Uh, <laughs> we are all gonna miss him when he's in jail, I'm telling you guys. Uh, all right. <laughs> Your next comment coming to the stage would make just as stupid a decision if he didn't have a strong Puerto Rican woman behind him guiding him with the hand all the way up his ass. Your next comic, the best sock puppet in the city, Tyler Bauer.
shakalaka. Home sweet home. Let's get into it. Who here remembers the 1960s show Hogan's Heroes? Just Will. <laughs> Will has the voice for watching Hogan's Heroes. <laughs> Anyway, Hogan's Heroes, if you don't know, it's a 1960s show about some American soldiers in World War II trapped in a Nazi POW camp. It's played for laughs. It's a whimsical show. They get into hijinks. There's a fat Nazi that runs the POW camp. He has a catchphrase. He says, I hear nothing. I see nothing. <laughs> Nazis needed more catchphrases. <laughs> it's wild. This is like 20 years after war, World War II. That's like having a whimsical sitcom about 9-11 now. <laughs> 20 years. It's been 23 years since 9-11. In the 9-11 whimsical sitcom, they'd be like, ooh, we found explosive charges in the basement of the World Trade Center. I hear nothing, I see nothing! <laughs> that girl is poison. Home sweet home! Winnie the Pooh? More like Winnie the Shit! <laughs> That's a new one I'm working on. <laughs> let's switch gears, let's get political. <laughs> let's get retarded in here. That's the original version. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, speaking of, Joe Biden stepped down last week. And then tripped and fell. <laughs> Kamala Harris released her campaign slogan. Kamala Harris's campaign slogan is, are you ready to fit Kamala this dick in your mouth? <laughs> She's got Zoomers working on her campaign. Home sweet home, I'm a man of many words. Ambidextrous, philanthropy, Puerto Rico. That's two words, that's buy one, get one free. Do, do sperm banks have a new no nut November bonus? If I don't nut all of November and come in December first, do they give me more money? Is it about the volume? Is it about the viscosity? I'm a man of many words. Also, who controls the sperm banks? I want to know. Who's controlling my cum, home sweet home? <laughs> it's the JOIs. The jerk off Israelites, guys. <laughs> Buckets and bags are the ultimate enemies of babies. Buckets and bags be killing babies. That's why they have the diagram on the side of buckets. They're babies' natural predators. Buckets and babies are like Israel and Palestinian babies. <laughs> this set is funded by Israel. Uh, I always forget that I have a belly button. <laughs> If my belly button uh, was a child, it'd be left in a hot car on a hot day. <laughs> it happens a lot. Dad's just stopping at Home Depot looking at uh, wood for a few hours, and then they realize they have a moment of realization. They're like, oh shit, Caleb's in the Honda Odyssey! Caleb's cooking alive in the Honda Odyssey, the three natural predators of babies, buckets, bags, and Honda Odysseys. Alright, this white boy's all out of bite. Thank you so much, home sweet home. Have a good night. We'll get back to Jacob McFadden, whatever. Tyler Bauer, 
everybody. Talking about killing a child in a hot car. A fun topic that everyone loves. This is true. I did think about it. I thought to myself, if that ever happened with me and my kids, what would I do? And I did think I came up with a solution. I would run like eight blocks to the next gas station and then call the police and say I've been carjacked. Okay, no one's laughing, but that's a very practical solution. I said, like, I don't know, it was a migrant. And they'll go with it, because cops vote Republican. All right. They're dancing in the back. Uh, <laughs> your next comic. Your next comic, honestly, um, the staff has asked me why we keep letting him perform here. Uh, and I have told them that I am like a free speech guy. And even though there are things that like push me to my limits, and your next comic is definitely that, uh, I have a commitment. Your next comic is a United States citizen, I think. Uh, if he's not, I change a lot of my opinions about him. Uh, your next comic uh, um, he has a right to say what is on his mind, but he does not reflect the views of anyone who works in this bar. Um, and, and by the way, he does not reflect the views of any good Christian people. So uh, with that said, uh, if you would like to get a beer, now is your chance. Go downstairs. Bridget's her name. Uh, your next comic, um, <sighs> scumbag. But this is a free speech zone, everybody. Put your hands together for the reason Elon Musk bought X. It is uh, human entity, Will Miner. <laughs> Jacob McFadden, he hates me! He did not kill his son by leaving him in a car. Keep it going for him. Come on. Oh, he's coming back. I know. Tyler Barrow, the other comic who's louder than me. Thank you so much for the adjustment. I don't need it. Keep it going for Tyler Barrow, everybody. Come on. He knows all the words. He knows many words. Oh, boy. When you find out about Dominican Republic, <laughs> gonna blow your fucking mind, bud. You won't know what to do with yourself. Oh my goodness. Hey, everybody. I'm so happy to be here. I don't like Tyler. I don't mean to get political room. I don't mean to get political right off the top. But uh, oh boy, I don't know about you, but y'all think uh, Kamala was just biding her time? Hey, there's that smile. There's that grin, friend. I knew I'd get you in the corner. Welcome to the show. So happy to have you, gentlemen. Don't worry. That's about as political as I get. I'm just kidding. I know. Oh, boy. Don't worry. Kamala's going to be president. It's going to be wonderful. It's uh, nothing like a president with the whole thing off uh, throwing people in jail. You know, it's funny. Somebody was like, Taylor Swift should be president. I was doing that joke. And somebody on the show was like, Taylor Swift should be president. And I was like, she would make a great president. She's really good at denying she's ever done anything wrong. That's a key quality you know as president. Come on, people. Oh no, we got political. Oh no, your friend's not having fun anymore, red shirt. Oh God, blue shirt and red shirt, you guys are my rock. I need you tonight. Oh boy, speaking of colors, oh boy, fellas and gals, the Olympics are in town. The Olympics are in town, not this town. That'd be crazy if the Olympics were here, there'd be a lot more like piles of dead slaves that they use to make the uh, stadiums. McDonald's will be charging twice as much, which is worse than the latter. Definitely McDonald's overcharging. But I don't know about you, I found out, apparently, apparently, room, there's some fucked up things about the Olympics. I didn't know this. I didn't know there's some messed up things. Just like, uh, just like CTE in football and getting rid of the short shorts in basketball, there's some fucked up things in sports. Alrighty, you all wanted the long shorts in the NBA. Some of us like seeing their legs. I don't know, I found out some pretty troubling news about the, uh, the Olympics, so I don't know about this. A lot of controversy, including the symbol. Are you all familiar with the Olympic symbol? Do you all know what I'm talking about? I'm seeing two of the colors right there, fellas. Yes, for those of you that don't know, the five rings, there's the blue, red, green, yellow, black. And oh my gosh, each one of those colors, you can look this up, this is true, each one of those colors represents one of the continents of the world. And yes, they are as offensive as you think they are. Anybody want to guess which continent got the black ring? No, it was fucking Europe. What the hell? Even Europe took that from Africa. Come on! It's okay, audience. It's okay. They left the yellow ring for Asia. They did make the yellow ring Asia. They are like, we are still racist. We are still the Olympics. We have standards to keep. We're still horrible people. Oh, boy. You didn't like all that political shit? How about uh, masturbation? Masturbation, anybody here do it? Yeah, Sumet was talking about it. Tyler looks like he does it. 
It's as fun to say as it is to do. Masturbation. You can all master your own vations when you get home. I don't know, did anybody ever have the talk? I once asked my parents, when I was a little kid, I asked my parents, like, hey, what's like sex? Did you all ever ask what was sex? I don't know about you. My parents gave me a fucking book. I was like, mom and dad, what's sex? They gave me a book. And I was like, I don't want to read. <laughs> I want to jerk off. Can't jerk off with a book, right, Red Shirt? You know what's up. But you know what another most fucked up part about it was? This book on sex, they tore out the last page. What? Yeah, I knew, even before I knew what masturbation was, I had blue balls. It was incredibly frustrating for a little eight-year-old boner. Also, just kind of curious for the fellas and the gals with the dicks. Did anybody else get a boner when you were a kid and think you had to go pee? That was my first thought. I thought I had to go to the bathroom. I was just like, why well, won't it come out? Ah! Okay, you didn't yell at your penises. That's probably healthy. You didn't yell at the boner to go away when you got one. That's fine. Oh, boy. Anybody at the socials? Anybody at the social medias? We got the Instagram, the Twitters, the Facebooks? Oh boy, anybody here ever look up an ex? Anybody ever look up your ex-gal or guy? Hey, someone's guilty up front. Right on, Sammy, it's okay. You're gonna feel, I'm way worse than you. This is really bad. <laughs> this next one, oh boy. Oh gosh, oh boy. This. Go with me on this next one, folks, because I may come out the hero at the end of this. I don't know yet, go with me. Like. I was, uh, was very drunk a couple weekends ago. I got home very late. I wanted to, like I said before, masturbate. I wanted to relieve myself, so I decided to look up an ex. Decided to look up an ex on the socials. And before you judge me, I looked up the ex. No shooting. Her, fro her profile picture was uh, her in blackface. I know, and I was like, holy shit! I thought I was the bad guy here. Thank God. <laughs> so I just masturbated to blackface. All right, thank you all so much for putting up with me. Let's give it up to the two colored shirts right here. Give it up for Jacob McFadden, everybody. This guy comes and says, oh, mammy. What a fucking piece of shit, like I said, right? Come on. What a villain. Now to clear the air. Your next comic is a good Christian girl. She's the sort of girl that, unlike Rick James meant it, I really mean you can take home to mother, okay? She believes in Jesus, she believes in savings and loans, and she believes that Ronald Reagan's spirit lives on through the course of the nation. Everybody, put your hands together for the American dream. Nope, that sounded weird and sexual, don't like it. Actually, I'm sticking with it. Put your hands together for the American dream, Emily Erblin! Yeah! That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. That's right, that's right. I'm a more tolerable metaphor for capitalism. That's right, I'm a more tolerable metaphor for capitalism, everybody. I've been thinking a lot about the Olympics. I've been thinking... I've been thinking a lot about patriotism through sport. Uh, I know that the Olympics are being held in Paris, France, but when I'm watching it, I'm thinking, you know, this is a lot like Richmond. I'm thinking this is a lot like Richmond, you know, it just came out, the, uh, the Seine, the River Seine also has shit in it. The River Seine also has shit in it, they just like us for real. Frenchmen are just like us for real. They also shit in their river, that's right. Um, imagine if Richmond, Virginia was like Paris, everybody. Imagine if Richmond, Virginia was like Paris. You'd go up to the bar, you'd go up to Bridget down at the bar, you'd be like, hey Bridget, what's up? Can I get a, a PBR? Can I get a shot of real tequila and un croissant? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Kate's Bridget, can I please get, can I get, can I get a Menelai? Can I get a shot of J-Mo? And un macro? I like un macro. Oh, s'il vous plaît. Parlez-vous français. Oh, the Olympics are fucking stupid. Patriotism is dumb. I don't believe that. Um, listen guys. Real talk. Real talk. <laughs> real talk. Um. <laughs> Can we pretend like airplanes in the night sky are like shooting stars? Can we pretend like airplanes in the night sky are like shooting stars because of tonight? 
tonight. Um, I could really use a wish right now. A wish right now, a wish right now. Um, Y'all, I work at a burger restaurant. I sell hamburgers and cheeseburgers. I'm, I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> I can't lie. I can't, so people have a calling. <laughs> For me, <laughs> for me, my calling is it's selling hamburgers and uh, and cheeseburgers. Um, some people, some people, when they order their hamburgers and cheeseburgers, I got beef with how they do it. I got beef with how they do it. Some people are like, oh, I want my hamburger to be an A plus student. I want my hamburger to be a pleasure in class. Make it well done. Okay. Some people are like, I want my hamburger like no other. I want my hamburger like nobody else. My hamburger better be rare. <laughs> and some people are like, leave it somewhere in the middle. Leave it somewhere in the middle. Uh, and then of course, when I go back to the kitchen and I retrieve the hamburgers from the cook, right? The cook is like, the cook is like, okay, that hamburger is an A plus student. That's the well done. That hamburger is like no other, it's rare. Uh, and that hamburger right there, that hamburger is the medium. And I got kind of scared. And I felt a chill in the room and I looked around. And I leaned in real close to the cook and I leaned in real close to the cook and I leaned in real close to the cook and I said, are you telling me, are you telling me that that hamburger communes with the dead? <laughs> If it's a medium. <laughs> Are you telling me this hamburger speaks with those who have passed beyond the grave, who have passed beyond their years? That's what they're telling me. That's what they're fucking telling me. That's what they're fucking telling me, everybody. Um, when I was a child, it was rough. <laughs> Uh, I was always thinking about my career. I was thinking about what I wanted to do for my career. Uh, when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to make hamburgers. You wanted to make hamburgers? <laughs> you know, everyone in the room fucking clap! <laughs> hamburgers, okay. Uh, and how about you when you were a child? What you want you want to do? <laughs> Come on, come on. <laughs> Hamburgers. You want to be a comedian? Did you some? Did you go up? No. You should. You should totally go up and tell jokes. No, that is the joke. Go get another drink. I'll put you up for two minutes. I would like to see you tell some jokes. I'd like to see. When I was a child, this is all to say that when I was a child, okay, I wanted to be a gynecologist. Do you guys know what a gynecologist is? <laughs> you know what a gynecologist is? Jacob, do you know? J Jacob has two kids. Jacob knows what a gynecologist is. Uh, it's expensive. That's how you get womb fruit. Um, gynecologists, they're pussy doctors, right? They check out the pussy. Uh, they see what's going on under the hood. They change the oil. <laughs> Go to school to become a gynecologist. Um, every lesson is a private lesson. <laughs> uh, and I really like that hands-on attention. <laughs> I really like that one-on-one -on -one instruction. Um, that didn't work out, obviously, so I refer to my first joke about selling hamburgers and cheeseburgers. Um, the second, the second option, my plan B, when I didn't become a gynecologist, it was actually to, um, it was actually to become a pimp. <laughs> it's okay, you guys can clap. It's 2024. Um, there's nothing wrong with sex work. You guys can clap. Um, yeah. I was gonna become a pimp, and, and my mom was like, Emily, <laughs> if you become a pimp, like, how are you gonna attract Johns? Because there's a lot of different. Escort services in Richmond, so like, how, what's your niche, what's your gimmick, like, are you gonna have the best hoes in town? Right, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, my mom was like, what's your gimmick, right, like, the best hoes, the tightest pussies, 
Uh, 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 Titus pussies, nothing else matters. Okay, um. Alice, big tits. Big tits. And I said, no, mom. Um, my gimmick with my private escort service, why I'm the pimp. The gimmick is, okay, the joke is, okay, the draw is, okay, the niche is, okay, the gimmick is. Listen, <laughs> the gimmick is that when you're a John in my private escort service, you don't get to choose what service you receive. You might get sucked, you might get fucked, you might get a pinky in your booty hole, you might get beat up in the parking lot, I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna call it coin flippers. Because you might get head or you might get tail. That's a pun. That's a pun. That's a pun about having sex in the mouth or in the in the others. <laughs> I'm not giving up your host Jacob McFadden. I want to apologize. I didn't mean to yell big titties out in the middle of Emily's set, but I have a marketing degree and it's in me to look for the unique selling proposition. Uh, by the way, uh, you know, Emily brought up gynecologists and I always had this thought, you know, you go to med school, you do two years and you have to pick a specialty. And if you've ever been in a gynecologist's office, you always walk past that door that says pediatric gynecologist. And I'm always blown away by the guy who you've been hanging out with for four years in college. And then he's like, mm, I got a pig specialty. You know what? Pediatric gynecology. That's the future for me. That's a weird guy. All right. Somehow you bring up uh, under 12 pussies and people get weird. I have boys, so I don't know what that's like. All right. Well... That guy wanted to try comedy, watched Emily's set and said, fuck this, I'm out. <laughs> that dream's over. Uh, your next comic is the exact opposite of Will Minor. This comic is considered by many in the city to be the Care Bear of Richmond comedy. He's a nice guy, he's a good man, he's recently returned to the scene. Everybody put your hands together for the Friar John of comedy, Zach Carpenter. <laughs> Hello, I uh, recently returned from the beach, um, so my face is a little sunburnt, um, excuse me, uh, but I prefer the term kissed by the sun, um, however my back got fucking roasted by the sun, um, so it's a little more like touched like those older ladies did when I was a boy by the sun, but that's a different story. Um, for another time. I guess it got a little too dark for the room. Uh, <laughs> unlike my back, which is bright red. Um, the other day I got home and I asked my dog, I said, hey buddy, what'd you do today? And he said, <laughs> <laughs> I said, God damn it, you still can't talk? I guess eyelash wishes don't come true. I wish you could talk. Sometimes I wish you had subtitles, you know? Um, I have a girlfriend. She's real. Uh, she's alive. Um, I promise. Uh, and she likes, she takes a long time to get ready, like a lot of women do, you know? And, um, but she likes to, uh, she likes to come up with these phrases to make it seem like she's not taking as long as she does, you know what I mean? So, uh, if we're about to go somewhere, you know, I'll ask her, I'll say, hey, are you gonna shower before we go? And she'll be like, I'm just gonna wash my body. And I'll be like, so yes. You're gonna do that thing where you clean 90% of yourself? All right. The other day I was going across my, uh, going across my fucking feed and I saw this woman, um, Candace Owens, I don't know if you've ever heard of her. She's a right-wing um, podcaster, influencer, and she was yelling at these, um, these women on this podcast saying, you know, in your 20s and 30s, if you're whoring around, you're never going to have a family or a marriage or a family or anything like that. And I don't believe that to be true one bit um, because I've seen Forrest Gump. 
Okay? So, ladies, if you're out there uh, whoring around in your 20s and 30s, don't worry about it. Because there's some retard out there waiting for you. It's just a public service announcement. Um, I, uh, I have an issue um, with, uh, with um, alcohol and drugs. I, uh, I can't drink at all. I see people drinking, I get jealous. I can't drink because if I have one single sip of booze, one single sip, within three days time, I'll be running around my apartment with a crack pipe and a Nerf gun, yelling at my dog, the British are coming, the British are coming. And it'll probably just be the mailman. I don't know. I, uh, my idea for a good night is uh, doing a bunch of lines of crank and watching all the Star Wars movies in order. That's my Paradise Lost. I don't know, not a big literature fans in here. Whatever. I was an English major, so. Paradise Lost is a long book, no, I'm not gonna get into it. It's a poem. Um, Anyway, uh, I recently was uh, hospitalized for my issues. Uh, when you get into the hospital, they ask you stuff like, do you feel like harming yourself or anyone else? And in the psych ward, you know, that's a funny thing to ask somebody who's in the psych ward. Like, do you feel like harming yourself or anyone else? It's like, no, I'm here because I was looking for easy cleanup ways to stay alive. Oh my gosh, is that too dark for this room again? <laughs> We're just hanging out. They also ask you if you've ever participated in prostitution. And I said, no, I don't think so. But there was enough time in college. I, and there was a couple times in college where I, uh, I, I, you know, got into the act of, uh, you know, coitus with a woman I didn't necessarily want to. Um, but I was hungry and she was offering me cookout. So I guess what you could say is, uh, I've had some bad box for some good trays. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something real quick, folks. Suicide makes you tired. Uh, I know that from experience. I've tried to kill myself with booze and cocaine. I know it sounds like fun, but it wasn't. Uh, it kind of sounds like, well, killing yourself with booze and cocaine is like going to the amusement park, you know? You're having a ton of fun on rides, but after enough lines, you're like, what the fuck is taking so long? <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here on this one. I, uh, one night I was out on this crazy crack bender and I called up my buddy, uh, who's a filmmaker, and I was like, I got this brilliant idea, okay? He was like, what is it? Lay it on me. I said, all right, think of these two grotesque creatures who are best friends and they go to work every day to work for this corporation that, that somehow manages to trap the screams of children to supply the world that they live in with energy. And he was like, dude, that's Monsters, Inc. And I was like, what are you talking about? This has already been made? He was like, yeah, Pixar did it like 20 years ago. I was like, what the, f are you serious? He was like, yes. I was like, all right, all right. What if cars could talk? And he hung up the phone on me. All right, I've been Zach Carpenter, thank you. Let's get Jacob back up here. Zach Carpenter, everybody. Keep it going for Zach Carpenter. All right, those two guys were from North Carolina. And I was like, hey, did you really want to get into it? They're like, we're trying to move to Richmond first. Who the fuck's trying to move to Richmond? It's so easy to... Smith, what did you do? Okay. All right. Are you fucking with me? Did you do something? Okay, thank you. Thank God. Uh, I was like, I need to stop drinking and get water. Uh, all right. Uh, is it now really that bad? I did it without looking. Is it uh, you look 40. Um, <laughs> so would you, would you come look into the video camera for us just so everyone can see you? You do look like you're hanging out at a slot machine. Yeah, you got You have a whole cup full of pennies. Okay. We're gonna keep the thing moving. Your next comic, your next comic, uh, recently critiqued me for not going hard enough on him during a roast show. Uh, it wasn't a roast show, but I just wanted to be mean to this guy. Uh, everybody, put your hands together for Louis Carroll.
Sauce? Yeah. Cool. Um, I try new jokes. I'm gonna try new jokes. Uh, clown. What's the scariest clown of mine? What are they scared of? An invisible box. That's their phobia. Stupid, right? That's their boogeyman. Mimes would suck at the game of charades. They would suck at it. Because they can't really tell you what they're trapped to. You just have to guess. Have you ever seen Seven? Instead of what's in the box, it's what's the box? Is it an invisible quarter party? What's the box? Ah, uh, magician make the box disappear? Locksmith. It's hard to be claustrophobic when you're a locksmith. It's just stupid when you're a mime. It's impossible to be trapped in an invisible box out in the open. It's the great outdoors. There are no doors in the great outdoors. Dandelions. Dandelions. Blow them and all your wishes will come true. You know what I call that? Hollywood behavior. Uh, roller coasters. It's hard to be bored in roller coasters. What a fun ride that is. You know what's boring? Synchronized swimming. They need a challenge. I said we give these swimmers some hurdles to jump over. They've been cruising on easy mode with pool noodles. I said we give them noodles from hell. Chow mein. It'd be, like, it'd be like uh, that video of a guy with a flute trying to like hypnotize cobras. Rhythm can't save you now. You could, it could be anything. Chow mein, spaghetti, instant ramen. The world's tiniest above ground pool. Throw them in there. Give them noodles that don't cooperate. <laughs> Make it hard on them. Throw in a master chef with a whistle and no patience. Fortune cookies. There's nothing more interesting than fortune cookies. Sounds like something you'd find in a tent somewhere at the state fair. Fortune cookies used to be interesting, but like the mafia, nobody cares. They're not mysterious anymore. Even though, even though fortune cookies sounds like... They're not mysterious anymore. Even though fortune cookies come from Pan Express, which sounds like a traveling circus. They're not mysterious anymore. Uh, Halloween. Halloween is about giving, but if you live in a van, forget about it. <laughs> ascots. It's hard to make scouts cool when they wear ascots. You know what's cool? Pretzels. It's a food tied in a knot. You throw in tangan on into anything, you make your life better. It's like a life hack. Shoelaces untied? Tie your shoelaces. Life hack. Balloon animals looking to around, tie a knot, life hack. You bunk up your company by investing in the wrong stocks, find a tree and tie your rope to it, life hack. <laughs> Cannibals. Oh, yeah. You should never king shame anyone except cannibals. Yeah. Could you imagine if your kid was a cannibal and they had your eyes and nose with the side of fries? <laughs> A lot of people put their kids in leashes, and I think that's a bad idea, but this is one of those occasions I'd be like, leash that kid. Shut up, Sammy! Peace to the Middle East! I love Africa, bro! I fucking love Egypt, too. I love Akon, bro! Shut up! I love Ramses, alright? Bro! Where's fucking Jacob? Uh... Yeah, carnivals. <laughs> carnivals. How many minutes do I have? Yeah, uh, five. Five minutes? No, I'm sorry, one. One? Yeah. Alright, um. Uh... What about the stage side? <laughs> I mean, I was doing well until Sam walked out and said Wakanda forever, alright? Ah. <laughs> uh, what the fuck? Someone left their phone case. It's an invisible phone. is missing. Just the phone case is here. It's fucking Larry's phone. It's an invisible phone. <laughs> All right, uh, that's been my time, guys. Give it up for Jacob McFadden. <laughs> Or at least put the ukulele case in front of her face. Alright. Your next comic. 
got here late. So I can absolutely lie and say that we had a huge audience here earlier. They were loving every part of the show. Man, this place was dynamite. It was fucking fire. It was magic. But you had to work or whatever. Uh, get money to buy phone cases. Uh, everybody put your hands together for Danny McCabe. This is a little awkward because uh, only phone cases I'll take are ones with Hello Kitty on them. Um, but yeah, no, thank you for the gift. Um, yeah, what's up, guys? How are we doing tonight? Woo! Woo! Love to hear it. Love to hear it. My name is Danny McCabe, as Jacob just said. Um, I am actually very new to stand up. My Woo! thank you. My uh, my first show was last night, and um, for some reason I'm back here tonight, uh, an hour and a half late. Uh, yeah, so a little bit about me. Um, I am, uh, I just turned 26. Yeah. Right? Like, right? Yeah, it's the alphabet age. You know, you got one year for every letter of the alphabet. And, uh, you know, the, th the great thing about that is, is that, you know, everyone worries about getting older, but I'll be honest with you, I do not give a shit at all because reaching 30 is going to be such a milestone for me. You want to know why? Because, for the next four years, there's only four more years of my family saying to me, well, he's still young. And in four years, they'll say, well, that's just the way he is. And I can't <laughs> wait for that day. Um, we got any Richmonders in the audience tonight? <laughs> Woo! Yeah, give it up. Uh, I grew up right here in Richmond. Uh, this is my home. Uh, that is until I get a better offer. Um, but uh, do we have anyone from Nova here in the audience tonight? Yeah. Oh, thanks for the red hike, assholes. <laughs> anyway, um, it's a great year to be in Richmond, you know? Uh, we have the gun hole, right? Yeah! yeah. Rest in peace, rest in peace. Uh, Chapel Roan came, and she really blew up around the time of her concert here. It was apparently her biggest concert ever at the time, so I think she owes us a thank you now, right, guys? Yeah. Uh, let's see. We also found out that the James River was uh, more than about 20% uh, fecal matter by solution this summer, so don't go swimming anytime soon. Um, but in addition to that, uh, also uh, CNN voted us the number one town to live in or in visit in the United States. I think we got to give it up for ourselves, you know? Like, that's pretty big for Richmond. Um, we should all feel a little sense of pride, but the only thing is, is that, you know, uh, CNN, it's not exactly a balanced news source. And I know, I know, I hate it, but I'm gonna have to report these findings. So, I'm happy to announce that Fox News has officially announced Colonial Heights as the number one town to visit in the United States. And if you do not get that joke, uh, Colonial Heights used to be a sundown town. <laughs> And if you don't know what that is, well, I'm not going to white explain that to you. Um, yeah, so 2024, it's an election year, right? You know? Um, it's, whoo, it's pretty bad out there, right, guys? Yeah. I gotta agree. I gotta agree. Yeah, you know, it's bad when uh, about a month ago we had three main contenders for president, two of which were incumbent presidents, and one of the best options that we had was a guy who was found to have a worm in his brain. That's right, I'm talking about RFK Jr., you know? He was independent. I doubt, you know, he's relevant now and probably won't be. He's uh, dating Larry's wife from, uh, <laughs> uh, married to Larry's wife from uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm, so that would have been cool to have a first lady. But uh, the big thing about uh, RFK Jr. is the fact that he's just like, yeah, you know what I'm gonna do? When I'm elected president, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna clean up the executive branch. I really wanna put some constraints on the CIA. Now look, I'm no historian, but anytime someone with the last name Kennedy says that when elected to office, or even getting close to elected to office, it doesn't end well. Um, so yeah, a little bit more about me. Uh, I'm single. Uh, anyone else single out here in the audience? Woo! Yeah, let's give it up. Beyonce has single ladies. Where's the song about single guys, right? It's probably, probably not worth singing or recording. But, um, yeah, so, you know, being single isn't too bad. Thank you. Um, yeah, you know, uh, my mom, she's my biggest fan. Uh, 
I told her, you know, she's always looking out, trying to find ladies for me. It's funny, you know, I was talking about stand-up, and she wanted to, uh, I asked her, I was like, hey, what do you think about me doing stand-up? She said, do you ever think you're going to go back to college? <laughs> That's the craziest thing, but, uh, you know, she'll be on the trail, she and my dad love to hike, and they love to find girls for me, but I never have the heart to tell them, because these girls, you know, they're, uh, they're, they love to hike. She says they're very tomboy-esque. You know, they got the whole REI setup and outfit. And um, I know what you're thinking, uh, but don't worry. She sends that text about 15 minutes later saying, don't worry, she, oh, sorry, she's not into guys. I already asked. Gotta love your mom for that. But um, yeah, uh, you know, last thing I'll say is that, you know, being single, um, it's a blessing. Uh, sometimes, you know, we're all, we're all guys right here in this audience right now. Sometimes we think back and like, geez, what would have happened if I stayed with my ex, right? Well, the good news for me is that every single one of my exes now is married, but they all got proposed to at Disney World. So I believe, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Woo, I, I, would, I would love to say it's an upgrade, but Jesus. Um, so I like to believe that the universe saved me from becoming a Disney adult, which I'm eternally grateful for. Anyway, thank you all so much. Woo! Love being here. Back to Jacob. Hey. Thank you. Danny McCabe, everybody. Give Danny another round of applause. Sorry I lost it at the end there. Uh, I went to school underneath the Magic Kingdom. My father was an Imagineer. Yeah, Disney adults are a special breed. When I was 15, I got my dick sucked by a 26-year-old lady with rotten teeth. Uh, on the monorail, um, my father uh, thought it was very cool when I told him. <laughs> We're still white trash. Uh, anyways, I think it's very cute being 26. You're still so young, you're so naive. You're surprised by the story about the James River being 20% shit. They run that story every seven and a half years. Silver, correct? Every seven and a half years, they're like, ah, the river's mostly shit. And there's sturgeon in it. Very cool. All right, we're going to keep this thing moving. Uh, we're down to our final few comics. You all know that because all but one of you are the final few comics. Uh, your next comic, he messaged me. He said, hey, can I go up early? And I said, wherever you fall on the list. And this was not early. <laughs> Everybody, put your hands together for a guy who's got to get into the high school in the morning. It's Adele Prashant. <laughs> Yo, what's up? What's up? Home sweet home. Home sweet home. For the few people over here and all the audiences watching outside. What's, what's up? Home sweet home. Home so sweet, it has home twice in it. That's right, y'all. That's right. All right, bonus are hard. Bonus are hard. They're especially hard when, they, when you don't want them to be. Like, why? Why are you hard right now? Why are you hard right now? Don't you think, Silver? <laughs> Bonos are hard, dude. But also, they're especially hard when you don't want them to be. Like, you're in the office and then you get a boner and you're like, ah, oh, fuck, now I gotta like adjust my stuff and like everything and come outside and then someone's like, hey, dude, you have a boner. It's like, hey dude, why are you looking down there? Why are you looking down there? I'm not saying it's big. I'm not saying it's big. But you can see. You can definitely see. There's a print. You can see. You know? Unfortunately, there are no women out here tonight. Uh, if you can pan that, don't do it. I'm sorry. Yeah, but the one who are watching, to make it relatable for y'all, isn't it annoying when your nipples are hard out of nowhere? <laughs> like why? You know? Like isn't it annoying when your nipples are hard out of nowhere? And then someone comes up to you and is like, hey, your nipples are hard and you are the one who are going to HR. The person who said your nipples are hard is the one going to HR. <laughs> wow. What a world we live in. Cigarettes are so good. Cigarettes are so good. Why are they so good? Cigarettes are so good. Cigarettes are so good. They're so good. Like, 
when you're smoking a cig, anything that happened on this side, you just step outside, light up a cigarette and just put it to your lips and it's so good. You know, like your mom died, your dad died, your monkey died, your dog died, your side chick died, your plug died. But once you step outside and light that cigarette up and just... It's so good. It's so good. It's so good that you fucking die. Ain't that a bitch? It's so good that you fucking die. You get lung cancer and you eventually die. Cancer is a bitch. Cancer is a fucking bitch. You know? But I... I have a solution for y'all. I have a solution for y'all. I have a solution for y'all. It's pretty out there. It's very out there. It is out there, but it's a good one. I had to chase after it, bring it towards me, and be like, this is the solution. You know? So, hear me out. Hear me out. Instead of aborting babies, instead of aborting babies, let's harvest them. <laughs> Instead of aborting babies, let's harvest them, y'all. Come on, you're saving a baby. You're saving a baby. You save a baby once. Instead of aborting it. And few years down the line, grandma has been smoking like a motherfucker and now she needs a lung. And now she needs a lung, so, you know? Just, just do that. Just do that. You know, you're saving twice. You save the baby once, and then you save your grandma later. You're saving twice. You, there is a special place in heaven for y'all, for double savers. You're yeah, for double savers. Yeah, Jesus' favorite so far, because you save it twice. That's right, y'all. That's right, that's right. You save it twice. So you tell me, are you pro-choice, pro-life, or pro-harvest? <laughs> or pro-harvest? Pro-choice, pro-life, how about pro-harvest? That's right, y'all. That's right. So the other day I was scrolling through Instagram, you know? I was just doom scrolling one of those things and you're just like, have things to do but don't wanna do. So you just lay down and let's keep scrolling, keep scrolling. So while I was scrolling, it just popped into a fucking life it popped me into a fucking life and in this life the lady had a gun in her hand and fired that bitch in the room and said keep playing with me bitch keep playing with me keep playing with me bitch keep playing with me and then her boyfriend who was on the bed sitting down and was like oh fuck oh shit she has a gun oh fuck she has a gun and then the girl was like, keep playing with me, bitch. Keep playing with me. Then she turned the phone to his face, put the gun on his head, and was like, say something. Say something. Say something. Say something. And the dude was like, ah, oh, shit. Ah, oh, fuck, I'm so shit. I, 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 I ain't playing with you no more. I ain't playing with you no more. And she was like, yeah. So Trump got shot. Like in this previous scenario, America is this crazy bitch. She has enough of these motherfuckers. She's like, I hate both these motherfuckers. I'm gonna take things into my own hand, you know? That's right. I don't have an ending, but thank you so much, y'all. Home sweet home, you've been absolutely great. And give it up for your host, Jacob. Fuck yeah. Adele Prashant, everybody. Give it up for Adele Prashant. Did you guys enjoy Adele? Woo! Yeah. Say something, bitch. Say something. Woo! Woo! Yeah. Boy, I, I had to go down and talk to the bartender during your set, and then I came back up for that, and I really thought Silver fucked up. <laughs> I don't know what he did, but it's not good. All right, we're down to our final two comedians of the night. Your next comedian runs a show just up the road on Thursdays called Revelé. I think I pronounced it right. I don't know. It's French. 
your next comedian way funnier than this audience deserves. Put your hands together for the one and only Sammy Tamimi. <laughs> Give it up for Silver, man. Silver's got a girlfriend and none of us here do. Yeah! yeah. This one's for you, Silver. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. All right, guys. Guys, I have a couple of jokes. I would love to run them by you. I want to try them at a comedy club, so please tune in. Let's go. <laughs> I love foreigners, okay? I don't know how you guys feel about foreigners, but I love foreigners. They're my favorite group of people to do business with, to interact with, right? I remember I was in Washington, D.C. one time. I ordered an Uber, right? A brand new Tesla shows up. Brand new Tesla shows up. I go inside, right? Nice car. I sit in, and it's a older Ethiopian man in a beautiful navy blue suit. And I gotta be honest, I love seeing foreigners doing well. That's my favorite thing. It is, right? You know what I'm saying? Well, How long yeah. have you been in the country, Prashant? Oh shit, seven years. So me too. Oh shit, <laughs> yeah, bro. Nice, man. Nice. How do you sound like a white guy? <laughs> How do you sound like you rushed Fiji, dog? <laughs> rushed Fiji, bro. So, bro, I know you have better things to do than listen to this shit, but anyway. Dude, I seen the, I seen the Uber. Boss man, you're new to comedy, right? Yeah. Yeah, you both, you look both, you look 22 and 52. How you doing? It's, it's a hell of a lot. Dude. <laughs> Yeah, some of it, yeah. Silver needs a hair transplant, you need a hair Anyway, so <laughs> I'm just kidding, you're a good guy. Man. You're a good guy, look at that face. That's right. It's nice to see a friendly face in comedy. So I'm in that Uber, right? Older Ethiopian man. I'm thinking, this is a classy ride. This is a fun ride, you know what I'm saying? Less, not even a minute. Not even a minute in this Uber, Uber ride, right? He goes, this job, very hard. No one tip. Women, no tip. Asian, no tip. Black, no tip. You tip? I said, I'm black. <laughs> like, look, man, I love seeing foreigners do well, but I'm not going to support that shit. <laughs> Damn, man, I, uh, I was at the doctor's office today, by the way. Serious, huh? Serious. What's your name? Damn. Damn, it's a serious situation when you're in the doctor's office. I went to the doctor to have a blister removed from my palm, a tiny blister. Because unlike most of you in Richmond, I don't like cutting myself, you know? So I go to the doctor, right? She comes out with a pair of scissors. She's like, oh, I wonder how I'm going to get this blister out. I'm like, hey doctor, don't worry too much about it. All you need? It's some sheer force. Get it? She didn't get it. Because she was Indian. And, uh, let's talk about our, our favorite Indian in America, right? Let's talk about our favorite Indian, Silver. So who's your favorite Indian? Don't say Kamala. <laughs> He's a good man. Um, our favorite, our favorite Indian in America. Let's talk about Nikki Haley for a little bit. You know, <laughs> a lot of people don't like Nikki Haley. They say, you know why? Dan, Dan, Dave, Dan, Dan, Dave. What's your name? Dan. Bro, you look like an Omar, bro. I <laughs> you look like you're from the West Bank, dude. <laughs> It looks like you occupied some homes, dude, you fucking, this fucking Jew face right here. No, I love Jews, they're good lawyers. Anyway, uh, <laughs> they make the best lawyers. So, uh, uh, Nikki Haley, right, her favorite woman. She's a woman. People don't like her because they say she's Indian. But she, she's Indian, but she acts white. But isn't that like every Indian? Okay, less racist jokes. Okay, I was at a... Hi, thank you for joining, sober. Okay. Uh, I was at an animal shelter one time. You guys like cats? Big cat fella, yeah? 
Yeah, big cat. Hey, brother, thank you for joining. Thanks for coming in, sir, and burping into the mic. <laughs> All right, we got one minute. I love cats, man. I have a cat at home, right? And uh, I've been trying to try, try new fashion with my cat, you know? So I got her a hijab. <laughs> but she's still not sure yet, you know? She hasn't decided yet. So I also got her like a Trump yarmulke. <laughs> you know it's funny when Silver laughs. Anyway, so I got her a Trump yarmulke, but it was too big on her head. So it just looked like one of those Vietnamese rain hats, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah you guys need to leave Richmond. Um, I landed on this one, man. I usually don't drink. Because when I drink, my accent comes out and my true self comes out. I love it, but if people don't know what to do with it, right? Like one to two drinks, I'm, I'm a very American guy, like that guy in the middle, you know, I'm a very American sport. Dead Kids 82, what the fuck are you wearing? <laughs> Who the fuck wears that shirt? <laughs> right, Dead Kids. <laughs> you look like you keep them alive till the blood runs out. Anyway, so... Uh, <laughs> Good way to harvest the green from Disney. Yeah, Forest Green. Yes, I, I have a part of the Illuminati, yes. Yeah, 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 that's good. This is my show. Anyway, so, um, <laughs> look, man. I'm tripping balls right now for dead children. You're tripping balls. I treat it, I treat it, I treat it. That's good. Um, this is the time to do jokes, all right? Anyway, so, look, man, I don't drink anymore because one to two drinks, when I, my, action, my, my, my personality, my true self comes out. But one to two drinks, I'm a very American guy, you know? One to two drinks, I'm like, don't, don't, don't kick dogs. <laughs> Three to four drinks, I'm like, some dogs, you can kick the shit out of them. <laughs> Five to six drinks, I'm like, this woman is uh, very attractive. <laughs> Seven to nine drinks, I walk up to her and I go, 250. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for your gentleman, the biggest gentleman in the house, Jacob Nick Biden! <laughs> Sammy to Mimi, everybody, give it up for Sammy to Mimi. It is finally time for tonight's headliner. Are you guys ready for tonight's headliner? Yeah! <laughs> yes! The best comic in this city. You've seen everyone else before tonight and you thought, what aggravating pieces of shit? <laughs> what are they building up towards? Something good? And the answer is yes. Your next comic is the only one with the hope of escaping this city and going on to reform. <laughs> For audiences that actually smile when jokes are told. Yo. Everybody, put your hands together for the last hope out of Richmond, Esther! Oh, it's a heavy mantle to bear, but I'll bear it. How's it going, home sweet home? I'm Esther. Esther? Uh, yeah, it's Esther. Uh, I have a joke about Sammy to Mimi the first time we met because I think it's so funny. It's not a joke. Uh, Sammy, <laughs> Sammy, I, this was one of the first good sets I had ever had, and I, <laughs> I ran into Sammy in the hallway after he said, Great set, man. I mean, uh, so <laughs> uh, I'm never getting over it. So for context, for those of you who are not in the know on that joke, my pronouns are she, her, and they, them, and my slurs are tranny and faggot. Uh, you know, yeah! <laughs> let's go. Kaikon Shabbat, all right, let's go. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm not, like, uh, I'm not like your typical queer person, okay? I'm not like your typical queer person. We are not a monolith, okay? I mostly know RuPaul from his fracking work. Uh, you know, I'm more of a fan of RuPaul's frack phrase. And before you ask, like, no, I don't listen to Frapplefrone either. That joke is only for me. <laughs> Um, you know, I feel like gender's pretty complicated. I've been, uh, you know, I've been feeling a little bit loose on the whole, uh, woman label recently. Do you know how hard it is to be a woman? To, like, commit to the fucking pit all the time? Oh my god. Jesus, fucking exhausting. So, you know, like, I feel like when I think about gender, I think about the whole spectrum. You know, I have, like, a pretty broad definition. So when it comes to defining my gender, I just, you know, I'd say I'm a pretty broad. Um, but... Truly, the more in touch with my femininity that I get, the more I realize I'm, <laughs> I'm like a tomboy, fucking, like, I, uh, 
my friend called me an albino stud. Um, you know, like I, I, I spent all this time getting acts, like getting in touch with myself and I just sound like a, someone I'm sleeping with did an impression of me the other day and she, you know, apparently, <laughs> I sound like this. And uh, so now I know I sound like a fuck boy, even at my most feminine. And you know, I thought, oh, they'll put me in the WNBA. And she said, no baby, we're putting you in rugby. So, um, you know, another lady, you know, this is classic first date stuff. I was on a date with this person. Um, you know, I said, I don't feel like enough of a woman. You know, classic, uh, classic introductory stuff. Um, and you know, she said, uh, she was like, oh, don't worry about it. Like, you're totally a girly girl. Like a little vicious in bed, but a girly girl nonetheless. You know, don't worry about it. Um, her, uh, that's, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, but honestly, I feel like, um, personally, and this, this could be my ego, it could be statistics, we'll see how the rest of the month plays out, but, um, I feel like I'm a godsend to bisexual women, um, only in my transness, it's nothing particular about me, like, it is sort of a monolithic presence of trans women, because we have that, like, Hannah Montana best of both worlds shit, because I'm a woman who listens, but I also have a dick, and they're always kvetching about that shit. Oh, oh, I love dick, but I hate when people are mean to me. Okay. <laughs> it sounds like you haven't thought creatively about this situation. Think outside the box, baby. Um, all right. <laughs> uh, are we all familiar with squirt? Not the soda. Are we all familiar with squirt, everybody? Yeah, the vaginal ejaculate. Any fans of squirt in the audience? Yeah. All righty, yeah. Put your hands up and to the left if you're a fan of squirt, everybody. Um... <laughs> Um, you know, personally, like, Squirt always feels like a celebration to me, you know, because it's got kind of a confetti vibe to it, but it really, it doesn't feel so much like I've won the big game, so much as, like, the team is dumping Gatorade on my head at the very end of it. Because, you know, I mean, there's a lot of similarities. It's bright yellow. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a sign that I really carried the team on my backs all night. You know, I really, I really carried them to this victory. And you know, oh my God, the electrolytes are crazy. Oh, never more hydrated than with a squirt in my hand. That is the soda. Um, you know, uh, and uh, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I know, I know, I'm so sorry, Sibet, but being amazing at fucking is not all it's cracked up to be. It really isn't, let's go, let's go. Because here's the thing, here's the thing. You know, all of this dexterous fingering, I'm getting carpal tunnel. Guys, guys, I can barely send a text. My thumb locks up, it's a fucking mess. You know, you pound all that air up there for so long, toots galore, all right? Shit. <laughs> and I mean, Jesus Christ, you know, you know, my lovers think they're full. God, they should see my schedule. Oh, <laughs> um, no, but seriously, folks, I am getting carpal tunnel. Uh, it's from jerking off. Um, it's pretty unfortunate, and there are stretches to, to help with it, but unfortunately, so I mentioned I'm Jewish. Um, not a Hasidic lady, I'm a Hasidic lady, but Jewish nonetheless. <laughs> and, uh, That's right, I'm the last hope for Richmond comedy. So, uh, <laughs> there's, there's, this, there's this stretch that you have to do when you have carpal tunnel to like loosen these muscles where you like make prayer hands and you like lower them down to here. It's a really nice stretch. But the most unfortunate part about it is like I'm trying to get in touch with myself just genuinely and without, you know, having anything projected onto me. And here I am, like a stupid little Catholic, just praying for the pains of masturbation to go away <laughs> every single day of my life. Oh, all right. Uh, do I have any quick ones? I don't. Thank you so much, everybody. I've been asked here. <laughs> Give it up for Esther, everybody! All right, everybody, that has been the show. Uh, we are uh, done for the night, but I would like to remind everybody that on August 20th, one of the best comics that's ever performed in the city, my friend Nate Izquierdo, who has many credits, including he won the Latin American version of the Mark Twain Award, and no one knows his name. So funny. <laughs> the funniest thing in the world. He won a very prestigious award, won by Dave Chappelle, Chris Hart, um, Chris Hart? Chris Hart, no. Uh, Kevin Hart. Chris, Chris Hart's a wrestler from the 90s. Uh, he died when he fell from the rigging of a stage. Uh, ironically,
Apparently, at the time, he was wrestling under the name of the Blue Bomber, which is very funny when you see his corpse on a live HBO event. Anyways, the point is, it's one of the most prestigious humorous awards presented at the Kennedy Center every year. And he won the Latin American version of it. And no one knows his fucking name or that they do a Latin American version of the Mark Twain Award. They call it the uh, Senua Clements Award. Uh, <laughs> anyways, he'll be here August 20th. He's coming back to do a show, uh, and then his special comes out on Netflix a week later. Uh, anyways, thank you all for being here. Uh, we'll see you again. We're here every first, third, and fifth Tuesday of the month. Thank you very much. Good night. Goodbye. <laughs> Help Bridget and I out. Bring your cups, bring your trays, bring your dirty plates down with you. Thank you very much. Good night.